Boom, what's up? Thanks, uh, thank you guys for tuning in, man. I'm super excited. This is, uh, I've got another episode of Expert Mentors Live, man, episode 42. So last week we had, um, we had Mr. Jason on with us last week and, and really broke down, you know, the, the call center, the ISA, really had to leverage and get some time back. And then we have the lovely uh, Miss Tracy Cousineau on with us today. So we're super, super pumped. Um, glad you guys are, are tuning in with us and, and you guys are in for a treat. So um, we're coming to you live from, from Frisco. We are wrapping up day three of boot camp, and it was just uh, by chance. Tracy uh, took a flight. Her and Jason landed here this morning, and so we'll be able to do this, uh, this, this expert mentor uh, coming to you straight live from Frisco. So we're super, super excited. So, Trace, you want to kind of, um, you know, maybe share a little bit of, of the background of the story, kind of what led up to this, and then we can really, we can dive into the meat of uh, what we want to share with everybody on today's call. Absolutely. So, um, why we started branding the way that we brand is, one, um, is that we wanted to make sure that we were branding ourselves. Um, people, people were hiring us. They weren't hiring the brokerage. Right. And it was always, if they even asked, it was probably at the end of a listing presentation, they would say, so what company are you with? And this was even when I was at Remax or KW. And then when we opened our own brokerage, I was never not hired because of the brokerage firm. They were hiring me. Right. Um, and as more that you need to add more value as the markets change depending on if you're in a buyer's market seller's market your, your value always has to continue to change and so um as we added more content as we received more awards um, recognitions we wanted to be able to share that information because it provided more value on who we were and why they should choose us over agent a or b um and so when John and I were discussing what should I talk about. Um, it led me to a listing appointment that I had last year. And I went to the appointment. I didn't know this until the next morning. Um, so I went to this listing appointment. The house had been listed for eight months prior. And um, I go in this house, I sit at a card table. Um, the gentleman was going through a divorce. And there was so much that needed to be done to this house. Well, the agent that had it listed for eight months didn't have, um, I guess, enough confidence to tell the seller everything that needed to be done in the house. And, you know, there was this mural that when you first walked in that was hideous, it needed to be painted. And right. there was um, cat smell and you know, the vents were dirty and the carpet was nasty. And so he didn't have those tough conversations. So, mm. you know, I went in there, had the tough conversations. It wasn't pricing. Um, so I left um, maybe 5% of the listings. I don't walk out with the listing agreement. Right. Um, I didn't know if I wanted the listing at first. I didn't know if he was going to do what I needed him right, to do right. to have it ready for something that I would want yeah, image want to showcase on. and be able yep. to sell. So the, the next morning, eight o'clock in the morning, I drop our daughter off at school. I'm driving in the garage and I get this call and I answered it. And first of all, answer your phone <laughs> because so many agents don't answer their phone and you're True. losing so much business when you don't answer your phone. And so I answer my phone and he's like, Hey, it's John. And and I'm like, John, 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 John. I know so many Johns. And I'm like, John, 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 I'm still not awake. I hadn't had coffee yet. And I'm like, and he goes, I pick you. And I was like, okay, yes, yes. And then he kept talking. And I was like, John, it was a listing appointment from the day before. And he said, um, out of 18 agents, I picked you. Holy moly. And I'm still trying to fathom. Hey, you just interviewed trying to connect 18 the dots. agents. Yeah, holy moly. And, and, I, and he said, if I took all of their um, listing presentations, he didn't call it that. He said, if I took all their material and put it all together, they didn't even match what just you have. Right. So I'm talking 17 presentations versus my one. That's crazy. And, and so he said, it was just, absolutely. I pick you. And so then I'm like, John, 
you really <laughs> interviewed 18 agents. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And he said, yeah. He said, because prior I hired the wrong agent mm. and I needed to sell the house and I didn't want to pick the wrong agent. Um, so John did everything he needed to do. He had, um, he knew that I was confident enough. I was going to get his house sold and he did everything that he needed to do. That's and his awesome. house sold in like two and a half weeks. Um, so that's what I thought about because I know in the past doing coaching with agents, um, when I was coaching with NAEA, a lot of agents didn't have a marketing plan, right? They didn't have material that they were bringing to homes. And that was always, was always kind of like, really like what value are you bringing them? Or I don't want my sellers to say, I wonder what Tracy's doing today to sell my house. So I give it to them and I even tell them that. So one day if you wake up and you wonder what I'm doing today, go back to your listing packet, it's in there. You yeah. can go to any of these websites or you can go here or this, everything is in here. This is what I'm doing. This is what my team is doing. And this is how we're going to get your home sold. So I don't have a lot of those calls all the time. I haven't heard from you. It's powerful. What are you doing? Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah. It's powerful. It's, it's being able to take in. If, if you guys are not able to demonstrate what you do at, in today's age and things moving forward, I mean, you guys are going to lose out on business and, and you know, it's, it's going to, you better get on board and embrace it. And so I think that's, that's kind of the whole point and the power behind it. When you, when you're coming in, it's one thing to tell somebody something, but then it's being able to demonstrate and do your work. There's just so much magic in it. And we've talked about even, you know, like even with the market reports on the listing presentations, the power of just having a, a copy and you have your Sharpie and you just kind of circle where it's at. I mean, that stuff's powerful because you're yep. demonstrating mm -hmm. some of your work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, that's uh, hopefully you guys caught that in, in, in that you're incorporating and you're starting to do those things in your presentations. It doesn't matter what presentation Tracy's mm -hmm. going to talk about on the listing side, but it's the same thing with buyers. It's the same thing on your agent attraction. You've got to demonstrate what you do. Um, you got to show them more than tell them, I think is, is really the power behind it. Well, and the biggest question to ask is, would you hire you? Mm, that's a great question. You know, would you hire you if you, were interviewing yourself and you didn't have anything to provide value or you didn't have anything tangible. And that's the key word here is that you have to leave people with something that's tangible, something that they're going to remember you by or something that shows that you're an authority figure in real estate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I understand 15 years ago, yeah. 18 years ago, <laughs> I didn't have it. I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. Um, I wouldn't have hired myself. Right. Would I hire myself today? Yes. Um, and that's what I always have to say, or, you know, whatever I'm doing, whatever content we're doing, I would look at it and go, would I be, would I engage in this? Right. Would I be interested in this? And if I for once think no, then I'll go back and redo it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, that's a great question. That's a great question to ask. And, you know, I know for us in our, our experience, you know, taking, taking the full throttle branded approach, you know, we were in a smaller market, so really being able to run with that. And I think, you know, one of the lessons that, that we learned um, when we transitioned down here to Dallas is like, ain't nobody care who Jake Hinder or who Michael Reese is, period. And so you get to see that as well, being in, being in Atlanta. And so, you know, what we, you know, wised up to, and I, and I know what Trace is going to get into here is, you know, it was the same thing, right? And, you know, you've heard Jay talk about it. You do a phenomenal job of it. You show up like nobody else. Thank you. And so that's, that's, that's the critical lesson that you guys have to have. No matter what, small market, big market, you have to show up like nobody else is going to show up. And you've got to be able to demonstrate what it is that you're going to do that's going to differentiate you. And the, and the thing is, too, is that, um, some agents will do, they may do a couple little things that you do mm -hmm. and you may do a couple little things that they do. But when you look at it over the scale of things is that nobody does everything that you do. And, and so that's the key for you guys to dial in on. And it's okay to do a little bit of what everybody else is doing. And, and it's okay if they're going to do a little bit of what you're doing. But when you, when you bring the whole package together, nobody else is going to do, do what you're doing. So, yeah. And you know, we, we bring everything the same. Um, and you'll see that um, as I hold up the content in our listings um, packet is we brand everything to look the same. 
Um, you want to dive in? That's because that's that's a super important key that I think a lot of folks don't pay attention to in that detail. You want to share why that's that's really really important. I want them when they see everything that's branded the same, they're automatically going to know who we are, right? Like when you see Chick Fil A logo, right? You just have to see the C, and you know it's Chick Fil A. So we want the same colors on, and you'll see it every page, just so that everything is, is just uniform. Consistent. You know, consistent. You don't want a yellow piece of paper, then a green piece of paper, or then a white piece of paper, then a gray piece of paper. It, I mean, for me, that's, I have ADHD, and that would just <laughs> throw me for a loop. Like, I can't play Legos because there's too many colors. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's a great point. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, and that's why we home stage our homes because sometimes when I go into these homes, I'm like, ooh, I got to come back and look at the bones of your property because you got too much going on. Like most of your stuff needs to go in the attic. And so I don't want a cluttered mind when I'm giving the presentation either. Right. And it's image. I'm very particular about our image. Right. Across the board. So uh, everything has to be consistent, has to be the same, so that n nobody's confused on what right. we're doing and who we are. Right. And it just, it helps with the number of impressions through through all the different channels with marketing, right? So like, you know, Tracy Tracy um, and Jason, they have a, just, a, just a strong presence on, on radio. Um, you know, it's the message that's coming there, but even, even into, you know, her, her, you know, marketing package, you know, there's still still the consistencies in in the logos and consistencies in the names, and it's just it really is is that way. It's just like what what you said is that you don't want to confuse the mind of the consumer because confused mind never buys, and, and they don't make a decision moving forward. So you want to keep the brand consistency. It just helps with the number of impressions that that we're we're trying to get in the marketplace across all the channels. And so um, it's, it really is, that's absolutely critical. And, and when you see the content that I'm going to show you is um, real estate agents, it's an ego driven business mm -hmm. and our content, I don't want to have to say we we're on this station or we're on this TV station, this radio station we brand with those, this person, or we, you know, we've done this or we've done that. I don't have to say any of that right? because it's all on here. It's going to be on most of the pages in here. They're going to see it themselves. Right. I don't have to tell them that I'm not going in there about my ego. I'm going in there to get to the goal of what their goal is. Right. That is my job. That's right. why they're hiring me. I just have that credibility. And I don't need to reinforce it any other way. Right. Um, so that's huge. Um, you know, I'm not going to, you know, we just, we don't go through this checklist of all of that kind of stuff, but it's, it's already here. Mm -hmm. And it's, when I set that down, they watch it sit down. Mm -hmm. And when I walk the house with them and we come back, they're going to see it again. Right. You know, they're going to continue. And as we go through the stuff in the packet, they're going to see new stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to keep saying, in my mind, if, if I was interviewing myself, I'd be like, oh, darn, that she did that or that she right. works with that person or whatever. Um, you don't have to say anything. Um, your presentation will say it for you. Right. It, it, it creates the, the authority, right? And it, What's it, up, Matt? What's up, Matty? Um, it, it creates the authority and, um, you know, that, that, that celebrity and it, it goes back to influence, mm -hmm. right? It goes back to, to, to influence over in, you know, become that trusted, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, everything that we've been behind with NAEA and the trusted advisor, um, really positioning yourself as that, as that resource. Yeah. So, cause I don't want to go in there and waste any time at the kitchen table. I want to get down to business. I want to get down. We do, we think half of our listing business last year were expired listings. I know why their house didn't sell. Right. I'm in there to talk about it. Right. We're going to talk pain. Right. I'm not talking about me. I'm going to tell them what marketing I'm going to do to get them out of that pain. 
And that's what I want to spend my time problem on. Problem solver. Yep. Solving problems. Yep. That's awesome. Cool. Appreciate a lot of you guys jumping on, um, tuning in. We've got... Uh, Make this the highest one. Come yeah. on. <laughs> so we've got Tracy in. We're, we're coming to you live from uh, from Frisco. We we're at the actually the Frisco Convention Center. Um, so we're, we're getting to hang out here a little bit, wrapping up boot camp. Appreciate you guys jumping in. So Tracy's going to dive Ready in. Ready to dive too. in? Ready to dive in. So okay. let's so, take them through that. And this is even yep. even even the your, your presentation packet, right? Even your folder that whatever you want to have. I mean, this is... Sorry, this, I got jacked up on the plane, legit. but usually it's pretty clean. But and it usually isn't dog-eared, so sorry. <laughs> Had to get that early flight this early morning flight. on two hours of sleep. So it's got a little gloss to it. And yes, we are changing it because it will have EXP on it. But anyway... Um, so down here, you're going to see a little bit of um, stuff. Now, this isn't one of the older ones. Um, now, we, we have an Inc. 500 and we've got an Inc. 5000, but we've got it three years in a row. We just didn't need any new ones now. Right. Um, we will now when we rebrand it. And well, now at that point, the last folders had a different behind the scene. Now, and this was probably the decor trend at the time that we did this. So now we'll put another different decor trend on it. But then when you flip it to the back, it's consistent. Um, has all of our locations, <coughs> it has our websites, and it has the phone number to our call center. That's awesome. So is that also um, photos and stuff that you would see in some of the listings and stuff that you would go into in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. So yep. that's pretty consistent, right? Yep. I think that's a key thing too. Is, yep. That's the number one, another, you know, a dead giveaway is that if you don't, you know, you want to make sure that it's consistent to what you know, the consumer would be seeing, right? You don't want it to be, you know, far-fetched. Like for us in Lawton, Oklahoma, if we had an oceanfront property, that would like not make sense. So um, just make sure that it's that it's congruent um, there. Um, I love what you have on the yes. inside. So I, I saw that. I saw that. That's, that's, okay. that's awesome. Okay, so no space shall be wasted. That's right. Okay, so, ta-da. So this is a, a message um, from me and it, has basically, um, you know, what our what our proven system does, what our core values are, what our culture is, and um, our customer service service satisfaction. Because these are the same folders that we're using throughout the whole entire team. So I want the consumer, the client, um, to, to know that. In, yeah. that I'm always available for them. You know, and it's just it's meaningful. You know, I wrote it from a heart, you know, we are really big on brand. And so, um, sorry, I'm ADHD <laughs> we're, we're, guys. We're getting sorry. distracted. Okay. So, Hey Wes. Hey Brittany. <laughs> and so there's my message. But if you can see here, I didn't waste the back of this folder, the reviews. Okay. Mm. They're reviews mm -hmm. and we all have reviews. Okay. Yep. So one of the laws of influence is, is social proof, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to have incorporate the testimonial. So make sure that you have a process of capturing the people that know you, like you, love you, trust you and incorporate, you got to have it so you can use it and being able to have it and use it in, in, in your, in some of your marketing. I haven't looked at what Tracy has here, but I would say that it, it, it would tie to probably some of her value proposition, some of the experience, something that people can relate oh i'm in that situation as well um and you know strategically and i you know i don't know what other pieces she has in there but just on the testimonial piece is that if you had you know something that kind of blankets that in there but then you could also create another piece that would go in the packet that yes, might there is. that yep. might be specific for mm -hmm. expires yep. or be specific yep. for, for sub owners so if you yep. know you're going to meet with that particular client that falls in that segment then you have stories and testimonials that relate to that segment it's extremely yeah, so. powerful and that's the way things are going right because mm -hmm. like if a client looks at you they're gonna go it's it's like do i trust tracy right by everything that i'm listening to here and what tracy's talking to me the story that's playing in the consumer's mind is do I trust her? Mm -hmm. Do I trust her? And that's the story that you, that we have to overcome. That's the story Stories that's playing in their facts. head. So yep. this is fantastic. Yep. So I'll tell you the ones that are in this and we'll change them now that we're doing, um, you know, we'll update them, but let me give you a couple tips on why I chose the ones that are in okay, here. Perfect. Okay. So Metro Atlanta is huge. 
and um, it's probably from one part of where we mark it at to another part. It's from the top to the bottom. It's probably a good three hour drive if you started up here and went, you know, we were all over the, the place. So I didn't want the testimonials to show all in one same area. Right. Right. Because if you go, that was always something that until we started really going back and adding all of our past sales into Zillow, that was always a big thing, maybe like four years ago, is do you sell in this area? Mm. Right? Yep. I, you know, where have you sold at? But, you know, if you go, and you should probably go look at your Zillow and look at your map and look and see, do I have sales in these other areas that I really want to start working on too? I need to get these sales in here. And even if they were 10 years ago, even if they were four years ago, you can still claim those sales, get them in there. So it shows that you've had activity in those areas. Um, so I chose different areas all over the map of Metro Atlanta, but I also chose things that are pain points of sellers that if I needed to, I could go, you know what? We had, we had a, a seller that went through the same thing you did. Look, actually, here's the review. Right. And so, but what I also did, you'll see, is that I bold, had bold the main points. That you want to stand out. That need to stand out, the pain points, right? And so I'll read you like two. So this says, I had considered trying to sell the home without an agent. Had I done so, I, I would have asked $15,000 less. Mm. So real estate expert advisors expertise was well worth the cost of their service. Boom. Boom. Yep. Another one is after having our home listed with other realtors, a total of over 1200 days and no offer. Uh, let's see, we sold it in 13 days. Yeah. There you go. To be able to have that. That's, you know, that's yep. so you, so you cover, yeah, you cover the for sub by owner, you cover the expired, mm -hmm. right? Right. You tell those the stories, you tell, tell experience. The other thing too here, guys, is, um, you know, you, you, you have this information, but you also too, if you're looking from a, from a, a cost perspective, I don't know if you want to do it on the folder, but at least in there, you guys, you know, get, you know, some of your affiliates, some of your vendors, they would be more than, more oh, than yeah, happy absolutely. to, to so, offset some of yeah. this, this investment and the cost for you. If you're, if you're yeah. you know, trying to think about that. Yeah. As well. And you'll see when we go through the packet that, in our listing packets and our buyer packet, whoever our preferred vendor is, they are in They're our in stuff. Yeah, we, we take care of them um, just like they take care of us. So, um, and opening the folder on one side is usually the, well, we, when we get to that side, it's the marketing plan. And then all of the, I call it homework, right. that the seller needs to fill out. You know, I only walk out with the listing agreement in the coming soon agreement and because I don't want to sit any longer right. while they fill out that. Do you, do you leave all of this stuff with them? So they Only have if they list. Perfect. That, if they don't that's always list, a good question everybody usually has. I take it with me and I will tell you that I've had, because I don't leave it, I've had sellers come outside and start walking up the road. When, and I've had them go, oh, you're not leaving that? And I'm like, <laughs> no. no, I'm not leaving this no. because people will copy it. I'm not yeah. leaving this. And if you're still interviewing, I don't want to give it to somebody yeah. else. It, it, you know, it, we spent a lot because, of time uh, coming up with this content. And so. Other agents will leave it. And if you're on a listing appointment and they leave it. Take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> take I got it. 17 packets from John. There you go. Yeah. So um, take it with you. Because when you show them the value and the authority that you have in how you're going to sell their house, okay, we'll sign. Yeah, a little takeaway. You little know, take it happens away, all the time. Yeah. People want things they can't have. That's right. Absolutely. So, okay, cool. Okay. So, all right, let's dive in. All right. Let me so, a lot of this is kind there. of in order. Um, so, we start with the hair sheet. So, we change them. Um, every year um but we brand on the bottom of it all of the awards so if it's our board of realtors accolades uh-huh yeah. um and just just creating more authority yeah so anything i mean i'll let you look at it again but anything that you've got 
of where you brand at or where, you know, if you're on TV or radio or any awards that you have that stand out, but this one's a really good one here is, you know, having that luxury um, certification that you can brand that. So if you're sitting in front of, in Metro Atlanta, anything over 500 is considered luxury market, right? That, so, would, that would be uh, 243,000 in, in Lawton. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you don't have the certification, you know, I have the highest um, certification for the designation, which is huge, which is in this packet as well. So I do point. have um, million dollar listings. I do have $2 million listings because I show them that I'm qualified to sell their home. Mm -hmm. So there's no question. I don't even spend a lot of time on it. I just, when I get to that, I'm like, oh yeah, well here, I hold the highest um, certification. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have it, take it, qualify for it. Um, you know, every market's different on what, right. what it is. But it's huge. And then I still have my CDPE, which is huge, especially if we were ever to hit a bubble again. Right. You know, keep up with your designations and continue to use them. Yeah. And, and for, for you guys, if you're looking for things that you may or may not have, um, you know, it's borrowed authority. So like even with being, being a, um, a member or coming to boot camp in association with NAEA, Leverage that, right? That's that. That's that borrowed authority, right? And it's better for somebody else to say. That's why the. That's why the testimonials and everything are powerful as well. So these are this. They've they've kind of redone theirs, but this is really the. the you can get these. It's naea.com mm -hmm. forward slash tear sheets. And you definitely um, should have them. Absolutely, it is. It is a seriously. powerful, powerful it is. piece. It really is. Um, so I'll show you. On the inside, we're using. Um, authority figures. Yep. So we're using Barbara on this one. I don't have to say anything. I just open it up and I kind of go over a couple things inside of it. Mm -hmm. And as I'm turning the page, they're going to see that themselves. But I also have Barbara on Zillow as my photo so they see on that. Zillow. So they see that. Some more consistency. And then I have a photo of Holden Inc. Magazine. It's showing that right. we're a top fast growing company. Um, and then I just kind of close it, yeah. you know, on the back of it, all of our advertising, you know, comes back to positioning their home and bringing them more equity than a traditional agent. So these are definitely something, if, you know, that you want to have. Um, we're creating a, our own magazine um, that will have a lot actually of the content because it was getting so big. Um, that we've created a um, quarterly magazine that is going to have about 140 all pages in it. So it will occupy all of 2018 sales, all of our active listings, coming soon listings. So it'll have, they'll be able to see it and they're not going to be in any type of order by the city either. So, or price, so that if somebody has a $3 million listing, you know, and says, do you sell $3 million homes? It's going to take them a long time to go through 500 and some homes to see if I sold a $3 million right. home, you know, um, or do you sell in my area? Well, we sell everywhere. Here you go. Here's all of these. They're just going to see a bunch of homes that they've been sold. Right. Um, so the next piece is um, I like to put faces and names together. Yep. This is key right here. Too. And um, I made this because I was having to, as much business that I'm doing and then trying to, um, sorry, ooh, some buzz blew up in my face. <laughs> um, trying to, to market, I'm, all, I'm an appointment still um, and just, you know, too busy to keep up with every phone call that comes in. So I always go over this chart, but I phrase it as, um, hey, I want to let you meet some of my team. They're my right arm. Right. Right. And so if I'm in an appointment and I can't get back to you, this is who you're going to be the fastest from. person or just yes. who you're here from. So put a name. So with I want you to have a face with a name because I know I personally like to know who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. And so we made the sheet. We, we just redid it, but I didn't have the updated one with me. But again, do you see the branding on the bottom still? It's consistent. It's consistent from the tear sheet 
from the folder, it's still consistent. But I'm showing them, this is who you are going to talk to during the listing process. Right. This is who you're going to send your paperwork to because you don't want me to take it. Right. Because it's not going to make it where it needs to go. Um, this person, and I, and I tell them that because I want them to know, don't call me to come get your paperwork. And don't send it to me because Tracy's going to lose it. it Tracy's a marketer. She's going to sell my house. Right. Sarah is good with paperwork. Get it over to her. That dings in their head that don't send my paperwork or don't call Tracy about anything to do with my homework that she leaves me. Sarah is in charge of that. Man managing the expectation, mm -hmm. right? So, and making it visible again, right? Like what we talked about. So making it visible, putting a name to the face, even if it's just you and an in admin, I mean, it's still just as powerful, right? And yeah. maybe you have one buyer agent with you, you know, get them on there, right? So, because that's who they're going to be interacting with their experience with you and you're just, you're just setting that. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And then, you know, we're broken out. We've got, um, Trish is my, um, personal assistant. She's my right arm, but she, um, she picks up that process of price changes. She picks up that process. If somebody has a quick question, she picks up the process of, um, negotiating the contracts. So I'm not really negotiating contracts either. I spend 40 minutes, depending on square footage, to an hour in a listing appointment, and I don't really touch it again unless there's a problem. That's what the team's there for. Yep. yep. Everything runs behind the scenes. I don't ha unless there's a huge problem going on, I didn't even know it closed. Right. And, and, and you know, for, for those of you that'd be like, well, I mean, I don't have a whole team is, you know, Tracy didn't have a team at one point either, right? Yep. So this is, this is progression over, over years and building up to it. But I had $156 guys. Yeah. So the whole point is, is that you can, there's bits and pieces here that you can, that you can start with mm -hmm. and it, it grows as you guys grow. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I want to make sure you guys take away. Yeah. So just, you know, this is huge. So if you don't have one, that if you powerful. do have a team, I promise you this will be the best thing because it's got their phone numbers. It's got their email address and they will bypass and go right to the right person. We've been doing this for about a year and it's just made a huge, huge Helps change. I was so stressed out. Um, I felt like I was an admin myself mm -hmm. because my phone wouldn't quit ringing or I would text messages and calls and just making that one page was huge, huge, huge. Big takeaway. All right. What do we got okay. next? So um, we have a staging um, uh, company inside our, our broke, our team now I gotta get used to that <laughs> <laughs> inside of our team and so with that said that is the first process of um and always make sure they're in order I, I drop this so they're not in order um that's the first process so if it's an expired listing I would touch that first in my appointment um and I go through the MLS, I print the MLS sheet and I print the photos that the previous agent had on there. Right. And I really dissect into it Crank and I down. show them exactly like for instance, last week, most homes in our area, they're traditional homes, right? Mm -hmm. They're four in a door, brick, stucco, whatever. And I went to this listing appointment. They've been on the market for, I think, about 10 months now. And they, um, the home was, it said it was an A-frame home. So we all know that third-party websites are now pulling that this is an A-frame home. And so they're being missed right. completely across the board because nobody wakes up and goes to our websites Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com, or wherever you're at, and type, I think I'm going to buy an A-frame house today, unless you're in the mountains, and you want right. to sell it. But that's just, they're being missed. And so I go over that, or if I had one that had a, a full daylight basement, it didn't even say, I think it said I had a crawl space. That's huge. That's a huge difference. They missed all of those people looking for a basement. And that's typically, when we relist these expired listings, it's just cleaning up. Right. It's just yeah. that stuff or photos like of well we stage them because I can't have that image of the but anyway pantries like I, nobody wants to see the pantry <laughs> right. you know unless it's like wow and there's a ladder in there to get to my cereal boxes but we don't need to put 
right. pantry photos on the MLS. And we don't need to put closets unless it's got a huge California, wow, wow. yeah, I want that closet in there. But if it doesn't, we should not be putting photos of people's shoes and clothes hanging in there. Yeah. And usually and a lot of them are so cluttered. It's so it doesn't cluttered really and it looks so gross. I don't want to see somebody's like underarm stain. I, no. And so <laughs> it's just knowing and the more that you do it, you know, I, I always say my favorite is it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business is the experience. Right. And so the more that you now that I brought this to your attention, the more that you see that going through the MLS, unless you already, it's one of your pet peeves, you already know, like, I don't even put secondary bedrooms in the MLS unless there's a wow to that bedroom. Right. Because the most important, and we're getting off this listing presentation, sorry, but the most important features of a house are going to be the kitchen, the master, the family room, the openness, the basement, and the yard. Right. right, if it's got something, but secondary bedrooms are really hard. They're usually like this with yeah, a window a or a closet, yep. and so don't waste your space with those. Um, and so I'll go into homes. I'm like, oh, why didn't they use that photo or use this room? Or it took them three photos to take one photo of a keeping room when just one photo, if you have the right lens, would capture right, that. Right. So it's really just dissecting in it. And bring or wrong school cluster or you know just there's, there's so just many errors details. you know and in my one of the things that i don't like either is if it says and i always say this is if it says use gps my favorite thing to say back is what well, they were so lazy that they couldn't put in how to get to your home right right how are they, they going to negotiate it's just, it's, 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 putting, it's, it's just the details it is yeah. And it's just saying it in a way that they're like, you know, man, I, I didn't even think of it that way. And I'll go back to a listing appointment that I was at. It was a, it was a football player and he was not going to waste his time with me when I went to this appointment. They had so many friends that were in the real estate business, but his wife heard about me on the radio. And so she said, I want to interview least, her yeah, as well. You know, business is business, personal is personal. And they do know a lot of people. And so I went to the listing appointment. She showed me around. It was like 16,000 square feet. So it took us an hour to walk through this house. And he stayed in the keeping room watching TV. He didn't pay me. I don't even think he said hello yet. So as we sat at the table and I'm going through this process of all of my, my paperwork and the why we do the things that we do and the marketing that we do, he comes around. He sits down at that kitchen table and he looks at me and he said, I wasn't even going to speak to you. <laughs> he said, but I've been listening to you. And he said, I knew that, but I didn't know it that way. Right. He said, you've explained so much and it makes so much sense. Where do we sign? Yeah. And it too, you know, guys having all this stuff helps you, keeps you on track, yep. right? To where you're not, you know, just trying to shoot from the hip or yep. from memory. And you know, then you got the you got the seller saying there, do I trust her, right? Mm -hmm. And then we actually to show it's like, okay, got it. Yeah. So all of our listings are staged unless they're vacant. Okay. So um, and sometimes if they're vacant and the colors are hideous, we'll have the stager look at it um, just because it's that third party, right? That's giving them that information. That I've had many sellers that try to buck at. I tell them, oh, that paint color, or I need you to, to get that chair out of there, or, right. you know, change this or that, and they'll buck at it. But when a professional stager, stager comes in, and it takes it off of you too, right? You don't have to be the bad guy. No. And no. so mm -hmm. they, can, they can come in and, and say, you know, hey, what we've seen statistically that this, so it puts it on them. It doesn't have to, it's not, it's not, right. on you. you're not the bad guy. And our staging is not, we're not moving furniture. We're not hands on. We are at, we'll go in and we'll spend, depending on square footage, about roughly an hour, unless it's got 10,000 square feet. And we're just giving them a checklist of the things that they need to do. And so then they'll get this report. Um, hang on, sorry. And the stager will take photos. And then she's going to give them the information on what needs to be done. So 
I don't have to babysit them. What I do is I tell them, Sage is going to meet with you. After you get your report, it's going to come as a PDF booklet. You go through it and you need to do everything they ask you to do. Perfect. Because that is your first impression of your home. And 95% of buyers are going to find their property online before they find their agent. Not to mention that they're looking through their cell phone like this. And if there's anything offensive on your listing, they're moving on to the next house. That's right. Right? When you tell them that, they do everything in here. Yeah, that's awesome. Once you're done with that, you need to let Sarah know, not me, let Sarah know that everything in your staging report is done. Is done. Is done. Perfect. So they'll take this and they're like, wow, man, that's so, I mean, seriously. And then I also go, I'm very proactive. Then I'll say, you know what? Go ahead and look through the staging report that I'm going to leave you because you can already get started get some ideas so and get ideas of what, yep, yep. Yeah, so it gets them started decluttering before they get there and they already start to do that. That's now, awesome. I am an assumptive closer. Okay. So I never, I don't ask for the business. I just start filling out the paperwork. Right. So I go through this as if we're signing because I don't, yeah, I don't leave a mini without the paperwork unless I didn't want them or I just wasn't going to push, be pushy to somebody. Right. But I just, I, and I've always done that. If, if it was okay and ethical to put a, a must for sale sign in their yard as, you're as I was going to the door. Yeah. To the appointment, I would do that. Right. <laughs> but I, um, so as I'm going this, I, you know, I'm making it more tangible and I'm making it part of the process that they're going to be doing this. Right. Right. And now I have a book of things that need to be done. And if I leave with my packet and don't leave it with them, right. They're lost now. Right. Because I started to give them direction. But then I just took it from them. Right. So they don't know what right. needs to happen. So yeah. yeah, that's another great point of not leaving leaving the packet behind. Yeah. So then um, I tell them that after, of course, their their um, staging is done, then we'll get our professional photographer cool. in the property. And um, we also do 3D Matterport. Um, so we connect the photography one day, and then we do the Matterport another day. Um, and then we have our brochure. Okay. So. I know probably 90% of agents don't do brochures anymore. And just like they don't direct mail, but I do. And I'll, I'll give you the reason why we zig do it. when they zag. Yeah. So, you know, we do um, these in house. So we have our own graphic design um, we have two, And we, we produce all this content in office. Um, so our brochures are made like a folder because if there is a brochure in the house, it might look like this in another list, right. right? So they can take this other house brochure and they're going to use this now as their folder. Right. So it went from being a brochure to now their folder and we're constantly in their face, right? right? Consistency in Same the brand. brand. The brand The brand is consistent. It's yeah. there. Um, it's just we're, we're having many more impressions on them. Um, you know, especially if that buyer just started looking at property, maybe they're not ready to make a decision. But the more that this image is in their face, they're going to question why they didn't like it or should they right. go back and look at it. So we just always want to. I do go to a lot of listing appointments that I represented the listing at the time. And now it's the buyer that's ready, that to, sell, they're ready to sell. And they have this still. That's crazy. I'll go and it'll be sitting when I walk in for the yeah. appointment. Yeah, um, they have shelf life. Yeah. So now I just got a new client that had a different realtor before right because they've kept it because they always say oh they're so nice we don't want to throw them away <laughs> and we well, just their purpose. house right so it's right like, yeah, so they kept it. it yeah because this was this is their house right. and they're not going to throw something away that has emotional, emotional attachment of it I so these it. are powerful um then if it's a if it's a house over five hundred thousand, um we do a separate luxury branding for that as well and so this just goes over and this is awesome because agents a lot of luxury agents especially in our market don't really know how to market luxury listings right. and so this just gives a lot of authority on where we're actually going to brand their 
pops out. That's super cool. Um, and it gives them, you know, a lot of information. And so they want their home to be seen. Mm -hmm. You know, they want that. But it also shows them, this was um, a stat that we did that puts it in there also just for that luxury um, seller that the impressions that we're getting. So in six days, they had 2,661, they had over two, almost 3,000 hits, impressions by being on all these other sites. That's so crazy. We um, are able to really stay on top and calculate the amount of views because we all know that it's price, location, and condition. It's not our marketing that doesn't sell a house, and we know that. So we make sure that we stay on top of any type of um, online traffic so that we can go back and tell them, no, you have 13,000 views. That, that you have 13,000 views. There's a problem. Right. You know? What is that, what is that telling us? So Mel had a great, great question. Uh, the folder's generic. You know, where do you get the stage of folder? Um, so, so we made it ourselves um, in InDesign. So having our um, graphic design company, we were able to make that in InDesign. Yeah. And, you know, so Tracy, just if, if you kind of caught that, she, they're just incorporating in-house with the stager, right? They're at that point in their in their business to where it makes sense to, to have that in-house. Whereas, you know, a lot of us are, are working up to that way to where we, we align with the stager. So like for us, Jana with Model My Home here in Dallas, you know, she was our stager um, company. And so if you, if you, ha if you have somebody that has, you know, a solid reputable staging, per, you know, company and takes it seriously, they're going to have, uh, they should have all of this, this information or access to all of this. They should be able to provide that for you. Right. That's one of the things that, you know, it's, it's your standard. And so you can say, Hey, this is what I'm looking for from you. You know, I want to align and be able to, to have that. So, um, that's, that's really key. And then another, another so, question was, yeah, uh, so who pays for the stager? I'm going to go back and say, um, for this, for the staging, we have three stagers and, um, because we are all, all over the driving distance, sometimes it's not, you know, they don't, we don't want to burn them out with, with right. that. And they were, you know what, I don't even, unless it's something to do with a listing and they ask me a question on my opinion of what I thought of a room. I don't even have a lot of conversation or meetings with them. They, there are three women that work so well together and they just, it, it's, it's been amazing. We've, I mean, we've had them for years um, and it just, they work it out themselves on who's going to take the appointment. We have our own um, behind the scenes Facebook group for our company, our team. And then we'll just, um, Sarah will put, in on the page is that we need home staging. She'll give the address, the seller's name mm -hmm. and contact information. And they just, they work it out themselves. Um, and it's, it's, it's perfect. And you know, they're in house, so they're on our payroll and um, it's, it's a game changer because it, when we get to it, you'll see what other agents actually say about showing our listings right. versus somebody else's. So the, the key there to, to Mel is that, um, you know, on that from, from a cost standpoint, it really just kind of depends on your, your situation, your business, you know, like, like for us here in Dallas, um, when we were rocking and rolling full, full steam ahead, we paid for that consult, right? That was just part of, um, well, you know, we just, just part of it. So our, that's a great point. Yes. So our listing um, commission is higher because we provide the value. Yep. And so we, we pay for this. So everything in our marketing plan for them, you know, and our marketing plan is set up by different services. Okay. So I don't want to list a house that's not staged unless right. it's vacant. I, I don't want to, because I don't want it to expire. My goal is to sell it. I'm not going to not just, it's just not our image. Um, and agents know when they pull up to our listings that they've been staged, they're clean. They're, they're, it's an easy sell for them. Right. Right. And so I don't ever want to come away from that. That's the image of us. That's the image of our brand and our whole entire team's brand, mm -hmm. you know, so it's we just, standard. we don't, it's a standard. And so we cover it. The seller doesn't cover it unless they, unless they terminate. 
Right. They so you can have that. that. You can have that in, in, in a listing addendum. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they terminate yep. it, then there's a, a fee to cancel yep. it. So like, like, so like for us, you know, we always, we've always believed and I've always charged the transaction fee. And so our transaction fee covered that covered pre inspect covered you know, professional photography. It just, it all encompassed it. And it was a business decision on our, our end to just to roll with it and collect it at closing instead of charging anything up front. And, you know, what Tracy's saying is that when you do these things, you dramatically increase the probability of attracting a high offer and getting the, getting the home sold. I don't know if I so, know what that is. Um, so the photos, I, I would check with, um, you know, before and after photos, as an example, I would check with your stager. Um, you know, oh, you, you yeah, could yeah, even, okay. you could even pull from the MLS and see good photos and bad photos. Well, so. you have to be really careful with that for copyright reason. So we had something, I don't see it in here. It's going to be in our magazine um, where we did like traditional photography, cell phone photography versus professional real estate photography. And believe me, there's a difference. Big difference. People that can take, even professional photographers that take pictures of people cannot take pictures of homes. And it's huge. I am so like huge. I, I go through well, not anymore. We found some great ones, but I was going through photographers left and right because I wasn't giving you that look. It wasn't, it wasn't. And I wanted to capture, they had to have the right lenses, you know? So there's a huge difference. Um, and I'll, and if there are more yeah. of my competitors, I play hard on that, you yeah. know, be so, picky with it. Yep. Yeah. So we're, we're coming up here close to the top of the hour. So let's just hit on some other key bullet points and kind of give everybody some context. What else is in there? And just keep in mind, guys, this is going to grow for you. Yeah. And um, yeah. So we go over, I'm going to run through a few. We go through, um, but you see how everything's branded really all the same, the same font, the same look, um, maximizing their curb appeal. And then just the final preparation tips for when the photographer is coming, make sure the toilet seats are down. This is all fantastic stuff. And a lot of this stuff, guys, um, you know, your stager can get this for you, right? This is, there's, there's staging associations out there. I mean, do your homework, find, find them. Um, like I said, you know, Jana, I mean, Holly, Holly worked with Jana for, for several years and um, really helped build out the association. And they have a great association at Model My Home. Um, and they have a lot of this documentation and stuff for you. Mm -hmm. So be, it's, it, you know, it's, it is your standard, right? It is your brand. So be, be, difficult with it right be be firm with it and and really make sure that you're putting that image out there that represent represents you so um we have this it's just it's really just that recommended that that trusted public figure it's just that endorsement mm -hmm. where i don't want to come out and say i'm endorsed by this person or i'm endorsed by this person or i'm on the radio with this person so we have have this information in there that first of all, it tells them that we spend more money marketing their home. We went through our um, taxes and we know how much we spend in marketing and we wanted to let everybody know, you know, this is, this is something that, you know, we are um, going to get your home sold. So we put that information on there, but it goes with, you know, we outspend the competition. Um, we don't wait for the buyers to come to us because we have a whole entire coming soon campaign. And so we let them know that we're big on social media because again, there, we saw a lot of homes before they even hit the MLS. Right. Um, so we leave this in here. Um, so they know, you right. know, where we're not being, the, it's, it's, the it's the whole, you know, uh, value, value unarticulated is value unappreciated. And so if you're not willing to, to put that out there, articulate it in, in, I, I love the, Never assume intelligent for intelligence for the other person. Never assume any of that. So you want to have this information that that lays that out, that kind of points it out. Um, it may be obvious to you, but it may not be obvious to, to that other person. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely. And then run with it. I don't spend a lot of time with the seller on this, but it's in there, and I just kind of tell them that. And I tell them I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about selling your home. I'm here right. to talk about your. Well, I call it a house. About your house. Um, but if you want to know any more information about me and you get really bored, there's a lot of information that you can see just to know that we do, this is what we do full time. So, you know, if you've got stuff like this, that's going to show, you know, the authority, um, of, of great you. leave behind. Yep. And then we've been an eight, 500 company or 5,000 company for three years. So we have that in there so that they can see, you know, where.
Um, and then Zillow, you know, we, we do do a lot of business on Zillow and I know that's a, not a topic for today, but um, this is really huge because most of our listings rank number one on Zillow in performance. And there's many reasons why, because I, I understand Zillow in the system. And so I yeah. know how to get those views. So we brand that because I don't know any other agents that are going to go in and have created content that shows that they're going to out brands or they're going to out get buyers mm -hmm. traction. Sure. So with this, this is, these are all listed the same day. Um, you're listing rank number one on online views out of 11 similar listings. And you get, if you advertise on Zillow, you, then you've probably seen these emails that come to you. So that's all we did is we just copied, we screenshot out that email that was sent to us and then we just made it into content. And so it basically stays, they're pretty much the same price. We had 1,053 views. The next house that was number two had 313, the other one had 275 and the other one had 170. It's crazy. You can't make those numbers up. And when you just click and copy and you screenshot it, this is it huge. Yeah. Use so, it use that stuff when you get stuff use it find a way to find opportunity in it um this is huge these are um so the, the name of this says have you heard what our com competition is saying That's so it's amazing. not just our buyers and sellers right giving us raving reviews these are posts that agents have either sent put on my facebook page yep. or sent me in a message and I'm going to use that content. Heck yeah, absolutely. You know? And it says, as an agent, it's good feeling. It's a good feeling when you see expert advisors on one of the homes you're showing. After showing dirty homes, cold homes, and cluttered homes, it was nice to show a home where you know the agent cares and real estate business is their business. Lights are on, home was warm and cozy, house was ready to be shown and sold. Love agents that take the business seriously. That's Boom. huge. Boom. And, Gotta use it. And, don't you think that all of her folks on her Facebook saw that she just gave me a better review? Yeah, that's awesome. She just branded me. Yeah. You know, so. Extremely helpful. And then here's just another page um, of more reviews. Not this, reviews. Or, yeah, not the same, not the same that's on the folder. Correct. They need okay. to be different. Yep. So then we pull different. Yeah. Don't be lazy. No, don't be lazy. <laughs> and then we add, of course, a different city than anything that's on there. So now we've just maximized it and given them eight more cities. Um, we give out the cruise to the agent that represents the buyer. So we Great just give them away. a little bit of information about that. Mm -hmm. Great selling bonus. We've got agents that call us. What do you have coming on the market? I want to go on a cruise. Oh, you know, I took it last year. I've got a cruise voucher for two. So we want to, what if you cruise have Cruise certificates are, are really, oh, really affordable. Awesome. If you're not using awesome. them, you should. Um, now, this is my favorite. <laughs> so right. this is, um, we again, we do a lot of expired sales. And um, so to the tune of over 200 in the last 18 months. So we have on here homes we took from expired to sold. And so this is real facts. This is, this is really just my one page close. I, I could probably walk in the listening appointment and just show them this, but. Especially with the expires for yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're taking listings that have been on the market for a long time. Yeah. And then taking them and selling them sometimes before they even hit the MLS. And they're all over the place. It's not one specific area. And so they'll say, oh, well, what about my area? Well, this is front and back and right, we're up to five pages of these. And so um, they can look at that and go, wow, like for instance, this one, 293 days previously and we sold it in 85. And so they're not gonna ask me any more questions. Right. You know, they're, they're pretty much where we sign at, where you know, here's some information about, you know, the, the luxury market. Yeah, any of the information guys, anything, anything that you, that you want to have, them. put it in there, yeah. right? Don't be, don't be. I mean, don't be afraid, right? No. I mean, and then we put all of our information on our lenders, you know, and get your vendors in yeah, there, right? This will that. help. This will help offset some of the cost as well. It's yep. it's um it's fantastic. What's up, Phil? Hey, Phil. Oh, thank you. And then we have our services. This is huge. If you do not have a marketing plan that you can bring, 
to them, you, I just, you know, when you buy something, you want to know, like, what are you getting? What, are you getting? what is it? You know? Yep. So even if you don't have all the stuff that we just went through, at least have a marketing plan. Right. That's Listed going, core services yeah. And that you're, I you're mean, that's huge. And that's how we can go and say, we list from six, six and a half to 7%. Right. You pick the service you that you want. Yep. Right. And when you start deducting stuff that you just already told them about, that's going to get their home sold. They don't want you to deduct it. Right. right? And that allows you to get. And it allows you to charge. get. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm, absolutely. So, and there's, you know, the value is there, you know? And so, and this is what I tell them. I was like, if you ever want to know what I'm doing, you just go to this sheet and just go through the list because that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's and we're always doing. adding to it because we are like bowls in the china cabinet and we're always adding new stuff or one up and something else. So okay. we're always adding to it. So I always tell them, but there's more, you know. Um, but this will give you a good context exactly of what yeah. it is. So yeah, I think that's perfect. Um, I know that was coming, coming a lot, coming at you guys and um, definitely you know, take the time, go back and, and rewatch through this. I, I would say just start, right? You, you have stuff yeah, yeah. that you're mm -hmm. doing, get it together. You know, you don't have to, you know, it's like I said, I mean, this thing has grown over the years. And so it's uh, fantastic to see. And you guys do a lot, right? And it's, it's just taking the time and getting clear and putting that together and letting it to, to continue to grow. And it's so. really good, you know, to have like our um, graphic designers have the same vision. So they understand our brand and they understand our, our, um, our proposition, yeah, you know, and so, yeah, trying to accomplish. and so they just can create it, you know, like I'll give them a short idea or where to pull something from. And, um, next thing you know, it's, it's made, yeah. you know, so, once, awesome. you know, depending on how big you are, when you get to that point, I mean, it's just so worth it. It is. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I um, appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you know, this is uh, definitely what uh, Expert Mentors is all about, being able to, to tap into the horsepower that we have within uh, Honey Badger Nation and the, and the Fast Forward rock stars, and uh, really being able to, uh, to bring this to you guys on a, on a week over week basis. And uh, appreciate you. If you have oh, any thanks, questions, Frank. make thanks, sure Matt. you guys give, um, you know, Tracy plenty of love. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. That's what we're here for. Yes. And I posted yesterday on the page, please go like our, um, Jason and I's other two pages, there please. You go. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Thank you. Thanks.